The Ram Temple fervor has gripped India and naturally on the political stock exchange as well. We wanted to look at the impact the Ram Temple, the politics playing itself out around the invitations that have been extended, those that have been withheld or regretted will have on the political fortunes building up to the 2024 general elections. And we also want to look at how religious we are as a society and whether people think religion uh, and how frequently they pray has any bearing on who they vote for. So we look at that and we have some very sharp number crunchers on the show. I want to welcome first Sanjay Kumar, co-director at Lokniti CSDS, uh, leading sophologist. Uh, with us also on this broadcast is Amitabh Tiwari, the political analyst. Uh, we have Professor Rakesh Sinha representing the Bharatiya Janata Party member of parliament. Uh, we have Sanjay Jha who has a very strong uh, anti-BJP perspective, so he'll put that out for us. And we have Yashwan Deshmukh uh, from Seawater. So I want to take the first question, which is just to do with whether what's happening around the Pran Pratishtha in the build-up to the consecration of the Ram Temple will have any bearing on people's decision to vote. So I'll take that question first. I want to tell our viewers that this is a poll done by Seawater, and the responses that you're seeing are for Hindi heartland states only. This isn't a national sample. This is largely concentrated in the Hindi heartland states. So with that caveat, let me take you through the response to the first question. Will the Ram Mandir Pratishtha ceremony in Ayodhya influence your voting preference in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections? Here are the responses. 52% of the voters say yes, it will. 31% say it won't. Now remember, most of these Hindi heartland states in any case tend to veer towards the BJP. This is where it's largely BJP versus Congress. It's also where the BJP has in the last election picked up about 90% of the seats on offer. So it's already a BJP bastion in that 52% uh, of the respondents are saying yes, it will influence their voting decision and 63% of the NDA voters say it will impact their voting uh, decision. 45% of opposition voters also say it will impact their voting decision. 37% say no. Now the important thing here Sanjay Kumar is that obviously the NDA voters are going to say yes they are charged up by the Pran Pratishtha and they are likely to say uh, yes this will influence their voting. What would be interesting from a data perspective is that 45% of opposition voters are also saying that what will happen during the Pran Pratishtha might influence their voting behavior. What do you make of that? Uh, <clears throat> See, Rahul, there are different consideration of voting when every individual has one vote, but this may not be the only consideration of the voter who are intending to vote for the opposition party. But yes, they say this may be one consideration. There could be other considerations as well. So it is not a clear black and white divide that all the voters who are very euphoric, very enthusiastic about Pran Pratishtha, they all will tend to vote for NDA. And all those who are not euphoric would tend to vote for a position. There is always this gray area. You will vote for opposition parties, may not uh, like this, pran, may not support this Pran Pratishtha, or may not be euphoric about Pran Pratishtha, and vice versa. And the data is clearly showing that, Rahul. No, but what it also shows, Yashwan Deshmukh, is that the issue of the Ram Temple seems to have charged up the base. If there was a sense that 10 years of being in power, some amongst the 37% who voted for the BJP in 2019 might be thinking, Mera ye promise pura nahi hua, or my situation is still not as well off as I'd likely to be. Uh, and if anti-incumbency could have been setting in amongst those voters, what this issue is doing is, amongst those who tend to support the BJP, it's got people really charged up and excited. And to that extent, the BJP seems to be using this as a mass mobilization exercise Religion on the one side, development of the kind that we saw at the Atal Setu in Mumbai uh, on the other, and to get their voters excited by involving them in the various ceremonies and the build-up to the consecration. Absolutely, Rahul. And there are two things, I think. One that you have mentioned, you know, about uh, how to go about it and, and you know, charge up the, uh, the, the voter base who might be uh, just going about a whip of anti-incumbency that, okay, some of the other promise was not uh, completely full was fulfilled by the BJP. Uh, but uh, even more important than that, please remember, this is uh, also a one event which is going to charge up their cadre. And how BJP manages the cadre or uses the cadre of the RSS BJP 
um, infrastructure and in elections. The, we have just seen the result of that in the Madhya Pradesh Assembly election. I mean, arguably, one state which they were uncomfortable, 15 years of anti-incumbency, you know, people were having facing fatigue and they swept that election purely from the organizational power. So I think, yes, you are right uh, about the, you know, uh, the, the set of angry voters who might... Uh, find this issue emotional enough to put their anger aside. But even more important than that, I think this is going to charge up their cadre who are going to actually work on the election day to pull up the turnout. Okay, let's look at the second question. Do you think that the Congress party should attend the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishtha ceremony in Ayodhya on the 22nd of January? So this was the second question posed by Sea Voter to respondents in the Hindi Heartland states. This is the response that Seawater got. 64% of the respondents say yes, uh, the Congress should have attended the Ram Mandir opening. 24% are saying no. Uh, amongst opposition voters also, Amitabh Tiwari, 56.3% of those who say they vote for the opposition say that the Congress should have attended the Ram Mandir opening. If you were in the Congress camp, is that a number that would uh, scare you? that even amongst those who have, uh, who have declared that they intended or intend to vote for the opposition, 56.3% saying the Congress should have attended the opening of the Ram Mandir. Amitabh Tiwari. Yeah, I, I think this is in line with what we have been discussing over the, year, over the days on your channel, that the decision of the Congress party not to attend would actually backfire. So we are seeing that even amongst the opposition voters in the Hindi heartland states, almost more than half of the population or their voting population sees that the Congress not attending is, is probably not sending a right message. And on an overall basis also, this is impacting almost two-thirds of the voters with one-third saying no or don't know. So in the Hindi heartland states, of course, one can argue that BJP already has a lot of seats, 187 out of 225. However, there is scope for improvement in UP because now you have a weaker Gadbandan or a Mahagadbandan PSP out of the alliance. And with BJP and with JDU exiting the alliance in Bihar, BJP contesting on more seats in Bihar also means that there could be some upside for the BJP there as well. So all this indicates actually an upside for the BJP in the Hindi heartland states if this holds till the elections. And one last point is that on the influence we've seen, uh, the first question, almost two-thirds of the BJP voters, which is the core vote base, say that they are being influenced or they will be influenced by this Ram Mandir inauguration. And one-third, which is the... Uh, one third are saying that it, is, it may or may not. So that is broadly in line with the two third hardcore ideological vote of the BJP and one third of the BJP vote, which is largely due to the Modi factor. Okay, let's come to the next question on this poll. And I want Sanjay Jha to listen very carefully because he'd earlier argued that the Congress should in fact boycott and not go for the consecration. Uh, when the question was asked, do you think the decision of Sonia Gandhi and Malikarjun Kharge of not attending the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishtha can harm the Congress party in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections? 46% of opposition voters said yes. 55% of total voters said no. So forget total because you know that includes a large chunk of NDA voters as well. Let Sanjay Jha just focus on this part. 46.5% uh, of opposition voters saying yes the Congress's decision of not attending uh, the consecration ceremony will hurt uh, the Congress's chances. Is that something, if you were in the Congress camp uh, looking at these numbers, would that be ringing alarm bells? Uh, Rahul, let me tell you that I have been of the view, I've said it publicly, I've said it actually on Rajdeep's program on India Today, that the Congress party actually should have done both the things, attended the consecration ceremony, and at the same time pointed out how the BGP is making it into a political project. The two are not mutually exclusive. Uh, as we all are aware, we are all seasoned people here on your program today. 
and you're a veteran uh, reporter and, a, and an editor. Everybody knows, you know, we are not born yesterday. The BJP is trying to appropriate a religious event and giving it a political slant. That's the reason why the Shankar Acharya is not coming, right? If it was a religious event, the Shankar Acharya ought to be there. The truth is, for the Congress party, however, it also made sense to, because the BJP's propaganda machine always paints it successfully as a minority appeasement party, and the Congress's political communication has never been a strong point, that these things become even more vulnerable. So I'm of the view that the Congress party should have attended the consecration ceremony, and the Congress party should have also exposed the BJP's double standards in exploiting a very sacred religious event for a political gain. Sina, respond to that. Do you think, Rakesh ji, the fact that some of the Shankaracharyas have said that they will not be coming, the others too are staying away, but they're not saying they're not boycotting, they're just uh, saying that they will not be there even though they support the function. Do you think some of that has marred the BJP's effort to put the Congress and the opposition on the mat? You were saying, why aren't you coming now? The Congress is turning around and saying, but Shankaracharya ji is not coming. You know, the reasons for the Congress party and SLA is not to attend the Pranam uh, uh, is something different. Their new creed is anti-Hindu. And they have cleansed the, all the people who are supporter of the cultural nationalism. You remember Rahul during the Somnath Temple inauguration when Babu Rajendra Prasad, the president of India, attended that. Nehru opposed it. But Sampurnanand. People like Sampurnanand was the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh sometimes. Kanhayalal Maniklal Munsi was the cabinet minister of Nehru government. Sadar Balla Bhai Pati, always supporting the, uh, that culture festival. That was Somna, the Jirnodhar of the Sarna, uh, Somna temple. So the Congress had two wings. One Nehruized, other was non-Nehru wing that supported the culture nationalist. But over the years, the culture nationalist and those who supported the India's culture heritage, India's legacies, uh, India's prosperity in the uh, uh, spiritual field, they, they have been completely ousted from the Congress party. Now what Sanjay Jha is suggesting is a strategic. It's a question of passion for the Ram Temple. It is not the passion. It's giving instrumental uh, advice to the government. You attend and oppose. Question is that this is the inauguration of the Ram Temple. And Prime Minister of India is the Prime Minister of India. He's not only a BJP leader. He's doing that. That time, Dr. Babu Rajan Prasad was doing that was the President of India. So when you are boycotting, you are giving a message to the Indian people that you are still alienated from the India's cultural heritage. Second important thing that whatever the electoral prospect, we are least bothered because our Prime Minister Narendra Modi's excellent vision are sufficient to get 400 seats. Here I am telling that this event is going to impact the India's party system. The, we are, have the party system democracy. In and that party system, that. now there is a clear cut division. Those who are going to be supporting 370, retaining 370, they are opposing the inauguration of Ram Temple. They are the people who are supporting the breaking India group. So Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, and their allies, like RJD or, or some other parties, they, they all are betraying the India's great grand cultural event. No, this okay. is not only Sanjay Kumar wants to respond, respond, respond to what you're saying, one, but one I, sentence, okay, one yes, sentence, yes. One sentence. This is not only uh, Rahul, can I quickly respond to him? No, what? It, 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 Prime Minister Modi should be credited that he created a very harmonious situation in the country. And after the Supreme Court decision, this is a civilizational event. We are retaining, regaining, reconnecting with our civilizational heritage. And that Congress party is betraying that civilizational event. It should not only condemn people of India, posterity of India would reject Congress party in the, future. The Congress party runs the risk of coming across as irreligious or anti-religious even uh, by choosing to stay away. That's the charge the BJP will fling the Congress's way again and again, Sanjay Jha. Rahul, you know, this is the point here. The BJP yesterday put out a poster which tells you the, the basically it is a political project, right? They put out a poster with all the faces of the opposition leaders calling them anti-Sanatan, which happened within 24 hours of the Congress making a statement that it was not going to attend the, uh, the Pran Pratish Tuck. Here is the question. End of day, that told you that this is a political project for the BJP. And number two, Anti-Sanatan, 
I think Mr. Sinha should know, even I'm a Hindu and even he's a Hindu, we are, I'm also a practicing Hindu, by the way. The truth of the matter is, the Shankar Acharyas, who's, whom I believe in, are higher in my esteem in terms of Hinduism than an Amit Shah or a Mohan Bhagwat or a Narendra Modi. And they have been there for 2,500 years. And they're saying, you are being anti sanatan by not following the traditions, the protocol, and the decorum of the Hindu, Hindu faith. In, in the in inaugurating an incomplete temple. You have a lot to explain, Sinaji. You can't dodge it by hollow rhetoric here. Okay. I want to, because I don't want to make this a two-two no, 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 regular no, political show. I want to focus seconds, on the data over here. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds. 30 seconds no, I want to no, focus no. on the data. Yes. Hindu, Hindu spiritual thought is not a a, a, a unified. It is a there is a lot of diversity. We have a, a spiritual pluralism. So there is the interpretation of Panchan, there is the interpretation of the inauguration, there is the interpretation of the temples. So th this is a democratic uh, religion. This is not a theocratic and author, author, authoritarian religion. That that is a point. Okay. So you go go for the marriage time, you will find that Mithila Panchan is saying something, Banaras Panchan is saying something. So I think this is a project. This is a civilizational project. More than a religious project, this is a, this is a civilizational project which you, which we are pursuing, accomplishing. An entire nation is prime with prime minister right. Narendra Modi. But the question is: the civilization just looked at from a Hinduism or Hindutva point of view, or does the civilization include other religions as well? And what do they think of? what you are calling a civilizational project, but that's a matter of another debate and I don't want to get into that right now. I want to focus on the data. Uh, do you think that other leaders of the Opposition India Alliance will also now follow the Congress party and decide not to attend the Ram Mandir Pratishta ceremony? Let's see what the responses to this question have been. So this is the question. The Congress has already boycotted some of the leaders like Akhejriwal, Nitish Kumar, uh, either haven't been invited or haven't indicated whether they will come or not. So this is what uh, the response, uh, the respondents in the Sea Voter Survey said. 35% felt that the Congress's decision will impact the others. 30% said no, it will not impact the others. 34% said they frankly don't know. And Amitabh Tiwari, that's quite true because, you know, while the Congress has taken this decision whether a Nitish Kumar agrees with it, Akhilesh has spoken out against or whether a Kejriwal agrees with it. First, whether they've received an invitation formally or not, that status in some cases unclear. And secondly, whether they will come or not also seems unclear. It seems those who are unlikely to come got the invitation. Those who may have wanted to come, we don't know whether they're invited or not. See, essentially in India uh, block, there is no clear leader and there is a tussle going on between the regional parties as the, and the Congress party as to who should have the prime ministerial candidate or the face. Now here this question easily shows that there is no clarity even amongst the opposition supporters or even the opposition voters are not sure whether the India bloc parties will adhere to the decision of the Congress party of boycotting this event. That's why we see when there is a 45% plus uh, uh, number in all your three previous questions saying that it will harm the party, they should have gone and attended, and it would influence their voting behavior. In this question, we see a one-third, one-third, one-third. So it's, it's, it's essentially showing that the voters, including the India bloc voters, are not sure whether to go by or adhere to the Congress decision because they are probably aware of the backlash or the repercussions which it could have if they do not att attend. Let's, let's look Obviously, at that for a moment. It, yeah. Amongst those who said they voted for the opposition or want to vote for the opposition, will uh, the decision of the Congress not to attend lead to an impact on the other parties? If we have that question, on the screen, question number three, do you think the decision of other leaders of the Opposition India Alliance will also follow the Congress strategy of not attending the Ram Mandir Pratishta ceremony? Frankly, it's quite divided and even the voters quite uncertain about whether the Congress's decision will or will not impact the others. Now, I come to the next question. And this question is, if the Opposition India Alliance adopts the strategy of not attending the Ram Mandir Pratishta ceremony, will it benefit or harm the opposition alliance in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Here, 52% of overall respondents say it will harm the opposition alliance. 27% say it will benefit the opposition alliance. One in five say they don't know. Amongst the opposition voters, 42% say it will harm the India alliance. 
Yashwan Deshmukh, what do you make of these numbers? Because the Congress says those who are enthused by the consecration of the Ram Temple are already likely to be BJP voters. And therefore, by joining the BJP in this celebration, we appear to be BJP light or Hindutva light. At least this way, we've taken a strong ideological stand and shown that the Congress is different from the BJP. Yashwan. Well, uh, from purely from the numbers perspective, Rahul, I mean, I, I don't get their strategy correct. Uh, you know, Sanjay might be completely disagreeing with me, but uh, uh, whatever ideological positioning that they are taking or the point that they are trying to prove, it will only add up to the, uh, ironically and unfortunately, the anti-Hindu image which they are so so image is what even as per their own leaders, uh, A.K. Antonio's fact-finding committee after the 14 debacle, and they themselves clearly accepted and analyzed that it is the image that BJP and the RSS narrative building machine has imposed on Congress, pasted on Congress, that they are anti-Hindu party. They had to do away with that. Unfortunately for them, I believe that uh, this step is actually going to help the BJP to... Sanjay Jha, respond to Yashwan Deshmukh's because... argument that this feeds into what A.K. Antony and his committee found after the rout in the 2014 elections, that the party got perceived as being anti-Hindu. Here was an opportunity to say, no, we're not anti-Hindu. We're as enthused by the consecration of the Ram Temple as everyone else is. By staying away, you're helping the BJP build the narrative in the heartland that the Congress is an anti-Hindu party. Sanjay Jha. Rahul, I tend to completely agree with Yashwant. In fact, that's why I have been very vocal on this subject. I've been very categorical and I'll repeat myself and I'm not going to change my stance over the coming weeks. My stance has been that the Congress party, by not going uh, to Ayodhya on January 22nd, is only helping, unfortunately for itself, to play into the BJP's playbook. Because you are actually allowing the BJP to appropriate the entire ceremony, when in fact the truth is that the Congress party is as much a secular liberal party that should be part of a ceremony that is affecting 80% of the people of India who are the majority faith. And yet the Congress party could have also gone to town and said, you know, this is such a sacred and a pure ceremony. It's a historic occasion and it's unfortunate that the Shankaracharyas are not there, that the president of India is not invited. And we believe that that is something that needs to be yet questioned. So I think the Congress party could have actually, you know, in my opinion, had a double whammy in its favor. By not going there, this is exactly happening, what you're showing on your screen. Now, it's possible, and I do believe that any political party ought to be able to address these challenges. But my experience with the Congress, Rahul, has been, and I think you'll agree with me, that the party's political ability to communicate its way through the BJP onslaught has never been very impressive. Can you imagine 10 years after 2014, the impression that the party is an anti-Hindu party or minority appeasing party still holds? And that's a tragic manifestation of a party that hasn't understood the real politic of the day. Sanjay uh, Kumar, this uh, data set which suggests that 42% of opposition voters think that uh, the decision to stay away if all of India Alliance adopts this will harm the opposition. Do you buy that argument? One is that at least we're drawing a clear ideological divide. The other is, you know, this is not so much just about the Ram Mandir because the last large majority is uh, the Hindu majority and therefore you can't antagonize them all and just keep the minority with you. You have to take them along and focus on unemployment, focus on growth, focus on issues which you think can help bring voters to your side. Uh, Rahul, I fully agree that this is this is going to damage Congress uh, because what is happening, 2014 election, B Congress lost because uh, at the time the charges of corruption, the charges of price rise, etc. But I think the biggest damage, that's over, the, but the biggest damage to the Congress has been the image of Congress as... Uh, you know, anti-Hindu or or you can say pro-minorities. This tag, Congress has not been able to, you know, do away with and by not participating, coming up with a strategy that we are not going to participate, they can try and offer their explanation of not participating. They can say that the Shankaracharyas are not going to participate. They can keep 
raising question. But if you look at from the common po people's common voters' point of view, I think they would keep saying that look, this Congress party does not care for the cause of Hinduism. That does not care for the for the Hindus and the tag of Congress being a party of to appease the Muslim is going to stick further, more deeper, and that's going to damage the Congress in 2024 Lok Sabha elections as okay. well. Let's now come to the larger question. This is where I now move from the C voter data that Yashwant and his team have done to the CSDS data that Sanjay Kumar and his team have worked on, which is about how religious are we as a society? Does religion make a difference to who people vote for? And will issues like the Ram Temple as a consequence of their religiosity impact their voting behavior? So let's just go across and see how people have voted uh, and what they say about how religious they are. This is from the CSDS post poll data for 2019, 2014 and 2009. So here it is on your screen. Amongst those who say they, they go to temples daily, uh, in 2009, 28% said they voted for the BJP. In 2014, 45% said they voted for the BJP. In 2019, 51% said they voted for the BJP. Here you're looking at those who say they go to the temple daily. And amongst those who go for daily temple darshan, in 2009, 28% were voting BJP. In 2019, 51% were voting for the BJP. So the BJP was able to pull more of those who go to temples daily to vote for the BJP. Amongst those who go to uh, temples regularly in 2009, 24% uh, said they voted for the BJP. In 2014, 38% said they voted for the BJP. In 2019, 43% said they voted for the BJP. Amongst those who said they never go to the temple, 17% said they voted for the BJP, 27% in 2014 and 39% in 2019. Now, Sanjay Kumar, there are two ways of looking at this data. One, that the BJP's vote share has gone up amongst all categories of people, regardless of whether they go daily or they go never. The other way to look at it is, amongst those who are going daily, now the BJP is pulling far more people than it was able to pull in 2009. No, absolutely, Rahul. You have clearly explained the data. There is a clear trend. And what is the trend? Uh, visiting temple has a direct correlation with the peop how people are voting for BJP. More visit to temples uh, relates to people voting more for the BJP. And the data is very clear from 28% uh, in 2009. It has gone up to 51%. But it would be incorrect to say that BJP's support base has gone up only among those who are more religious or we can say those who are visiting temples more regularly it has gone up even among those who are not very religious who are not visiting temple regularly but look at the proportion so there's a clear pattern more visit to temple means it is an indication one of the indication that people have become more religious and those who are becoming more religious have voted for bjp at least in the past elections the other way amitabh tiwari of reading this trend line the more religious you are the higher your propensity to vote for the BJP, the less religious you are, the lower the propensity. BJP is increasing amongst all categories of people, regardless of whether they're going to the temples or not. But amongst those who are on this side of the graph, who go daily or regularly, the BJP is pulling many more than amongst those who are not going as frequently, even though amongst all categories, their vote share is going up. Yeah, that is one way to look at it, uh, Rahul. However, the difference is not significant. If you see that the BJP has increased its support base amongst people who are rarely going or, or were never going to temple by a higher percentage because it has more than doubled from 18 to 42 and 17 to 39 vis-a-vis -vis people who are, who, are, who are going to temple daily or regularly because the increase here is not 100%, it is less than 100%. So what this shows is that BJP is able to attract not only highly religious voters, but also people who are not that religious. And that is primarily, again, indicates to the larger breakup of the BJP support, which is, again, two-thirds of its hardcore ideological vote and one-third primarily because of the leadership. This 
is what I could gather from okay, the data. Okay, Yashwant wants to come in. And, Obviously, and, and one data can point, be spliced and diced in different ways. Yashwant wants to give us his interpretation on the correlation between religiosity and propensity to vote for the BJP. Rahul, I would like to use the 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 the, uh, the mechanism of deduction actually the, from the other way around. The way I am looking at this data is uh, what uh, Sanjay has been red flagging for the Congress that basically uh, the number of big number of religious people who are voting for the opposition parties, you know, that is going down. Correct. I would like to look at it from the different perspective. BJP is scoring. That's a different thing. What I look into this data is that the proportion, the opposition parties also used to command huge number of voters who were, who were deeply and rightly religious, in the, particularly in the Hindi heartland and elsewhere as well. But this data clearly suggests that there, over a period of time, Dr. Sanjay Kumar's data clearly suggests that the, over a period of time, it is red flagging that thing, what Sanjay Jha's uh, red flagging was, you know, that you are losing that part of that important vote chunk. You, they used to support you, but you are pushing them away. Now, this is very important because everyone has such strong opinions on the consecration, the Pran Pratishta, nobody quite certain of how this plays out electorally. You know, you at least get a sense of how people uh, wrap their heads around uh, these questions. So now, first we looked at those who go to temples. Now let's look at those who pray. Uh, uh, and naturally, if they're going to temples, they are Hindu, right? Because otherwise you'll be going to a mosque or a Gurdwara. So this is amongst the Hindu voters. So amongst those who pray daily, uh, let's see how many are saying they vote for the BJP, how many are saying uh, that they never pray. So amongst those who say they pray daily, 26% of the voters in 2009 said they uh, voted for the BJP. 49% in 2019 said they voted for the BJP. So the BJP was able to pull more people who were praying daily, uh, whether they go to a temple or they pray at home, that doesn't matter here. Uh, amongst those who pray regularly, the BJP's vote share went up from 21 to 41. Amongst those who never pray, the BJP's vote share went up from 14 to 35. Amongst those who rarely pray, the BJP's vote share went up from 16 to 41. So their vote share is going up at all times, but uh, amongst those who are praying daily, the vote share has gone up from 26 to 49. Uh, I want to bring in uh, Rakesh Sinha on this question of how the BJP is pulling a bigger percentage of those who go to temples, who pray daily, than the opposition is being able to. You, you know, Rahul, this is a natural consequence of the changed circumstances. You know, the, I am giving example of Kasi Vishnath temple. It's pathetic condition. The, the Hindus constitute almost 80 crore in this country. They're the, one of the biggest temples, one of the most revered gods was in such a pathetic condition. The government since 1947 it, it, it appropriated the temple's money, but they have never thought to facilitate. Prime Minister Nakredi goes to Prime Minister Narendra Modi after Rani Volkar. He created such a situation, I'm giving example, 3,000 3, square feet to 5 lakh square feet land. Second, the campus of the Kasi Bisnar Temple is now 5 lakh square feet. Second important thing that the number of people increased. When you facilitate the, then people come. Now the visitors in the last two years are 12 crore 92 lakhs visitors in Kasi Krishna Temple. The Congress regime, Congress defined this secularism in a way to deny the Hindu the dignified spiritual life in the country. You go and see the a, any temple of the country. They are only appropriate. They would not touch the, the work for property. They would touch the Hindu temples property. They would manage the Hindu temples, but they would not question the work vote. This is the reason that now they, BJP is BJP and RSS both are addressing the anxieties of the Hindu. Anxieties of the Hindu remain unexpressed due to the coercive politics of these pseudo-secular in this country. And moreover, Rahul, not only the politicians, but the pseudo-secular intellectuals. They created such a havoc environment that calling yourself Hindu was just a kind of guilt conscience. Okay. They imposed guilt conscience among the Hindus. Now Prime Minister Modi and our BJP government Rahul, can and I the continuous RSS 
RSA indoctrination, cultural indoctrination, led the liberation of the Hindus from the guilt conscience infused by the Congress and their ally, intellectual allies. Okay, Sanjay Jha, India is largely seen as being a religious country. Uh, amongst those who are more religious than the others, fewer people are voting for the, BG, for the Congress uh, or the opposition than used to be the case earlier. The BJP pulling towards its gravitational force. Many more who are religious uh, than the opposition parties have been able to over the last 15 years. You know, Rahul, I'll tell you what emerges from your numbers. Number one, I need to tell you this, that I don't think India has never or ever been low on its religiosity. I think India has always been a traditional conservative country. I think India has always been a religious country. It's not that after Modi or after 2014 that has changed. I think the critical way is the Congress missing, uh, I think, a very significant underlying message here, which is, number one, that every voter who has voted BJP is not Hindutva. I can tell you Indians are religious. The Hindu voter is religious. He's not communal. To brand everybody who votes BJP to be communal is, I think, a politically a myopic thought. Because the simple reason behind that is that the Congress party has governed India for 70% of the post-1947 period. And you think those votes can come from 14% minority Muslim votes? The majority has come from the Hindu community. And the Congress party has won 10 of the 17 general elections, is governed for 55 years on the support of all communities across the country. I think the party seems to have become a little shoehorned politically because of the BJP propaganda on minority appeasement that it has not been able to address the narrative here that I am a big tent party, we appeal to everybody in this country. And I think that was an opportunity for the Congress to actually politically leverage. I don't know why Mr. Sinha objected to me being strategic about being there for the consecration ceremony. Because okay. it is a political project of the BJP. There is no denying that. Sure, no, but the Congress no, party should have been there. Yeah, but if the Congress shows up at the consecration ceremony, then the charge would be flung their way that, oh, this is BJP light, what's the real difference? So the Congress was really pushed by the BJP into a very tough spot, between a rock and a hard place, where do you go, where do you not? Now let's come to the last question on the political stock exchange this week. This is to do with the level of religiosity and uh, the propensity to vote for different parties. So here it is, uh, 2009, 2014, and 2019, all at the same time. So in 2009, let's just look at this part of the screen first. So right? forget the rest of the data, just look at this part of the screen first. In 2009, amongst those who said their religiosity was very low, 27% voted Congress, 13% voted BJP. Uh, amongst those who said their religious propensity was Low, 25% voted Congress, 19% voted BJP. Amongst those who said they were medium uh, religiosity, 27% voted Congress, 24% voted BJP. High, 28% voted Congress, 29% voted BJP. But remember, in 2009, the Congress won, so naturally it's going to be like that. Switch to 2019. Amongst those who said their religiosity was very low, 18% voted Congress, 37% voted BJP. So more than double for the BJP, even amongst those who said their religiosity was very low. Amongst those who said their religiosity was low, 17% Congress, 45% BJP. 17% uh, uh, amongst those who were medium for the Congress, 48% for the BJP. Amongst those who said their religiosity was high, 10% voting Congress, 53% voting for the BJP. So this is very clear, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, that amongst those who were very religious, the BJP was winning much more vote than it was amongst those who are less religious. So therefore, if and to the extent that you are religious, uh, you are more likely to vote for the BJP versus the Congress in the Hindi heartland state, that data comes out quite strong. Absolutely. And you can see the drop particularly on the bottom most lines. Uh, and that also tells you one more story, Rao, that, you know, uh, there were, uh, you know, uh, uh, what Amitabh mentioned that there is a section of the BJP voters which shifted over to the BJP on the development agenda. And then there is a base voter of the BJP on the religious ground or the, uh, uh, you know, Hindutva ground. Uh, 
the the gain of the bjp on the religious side is not just coming from the congress it is also coming from the rest of the opposition sphere so the damage on that side is basically on to other parties as well you know while sure. the gain of the bjp among the very low side is significant but it is not that kind of a significant that it is on the higher side Okay. Of, of so, in the midst of all the news about the Anushthan and the Riti Rivaz, I thought it would be important to look also at the data and to see how this might shape voting behavior in the 2024 election. There is no clear answer because it's still a work in progress. But I think between Yashwan Deshmukh and Sanjay Kumar, what their data has been able to give is some insights into how people think about these issues. And I appreciate all our guests for joining us and sharing their insights with us.